The Sasha Vizenkov buyout has given the Raptors a huge opportunity to make a trade sooner rather than later, and I'm going to explain why in today's video. Let's get into it. And I use the term buyout very loosely with Sasha Vizenkov because I guess technically he did get bought out, he did get waived by the Raptors, but... They did not pay a single cent of the $6.6 .6 million that was guaranteed and owed to him for the upcoming season because the player Vizenkov was so desperate to go back overseas and sign with Olympiacos. He was so desperate that he was willing to give up his entire NBA contract to make that happen, which was a very welcome sight for sure for the Raptors. It makes that Jalen McDaniels trade that was already like a 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10 trade even better because they didn't have to pay any of the salary from the salary dump the Sacramento Kings sent over. But what's also extremely significant about the salary just completely being wiped, as well as the Raptors wiping away the Javon Freeman Liberty contract, it has given the Raptors a whole bunch more of cap space. And when people think about cap space, they immediately think, okay, free agents. What free agents can the Raptors sign with that additional cap space? But the first thought that crept into my mind when it came to this extra cap space, and it's now about $11 million in cap space that the Raptors have, the first thought that came into my mind was, what can the Raptors use this for in a trade? And particularly when it comes to a trade, what can they use this for in a trade involving Bruce Brown? Because up until this point, the Raptors, of course, have tried many times to trade Bruce Brown. They attempted to do it last season at the NBA trade deadline, and they attempted to do it in the offseason, this offseason as well. So two different windows where the Raptors had some serious opportunities to trade Bruce Brown, and they weren't able to do it. And it's largely because of the state of NBA contracts. There's been these discussions for the last few years about NBA contracts either being, you know, you're getting paid like a star, 35 plus million, or you're getting paid the vet minimum, basically. Not quite to that extreme, but we're in an era where these mid-range 20-ish million dollar contracts just don't really exist, and therefore there's not many tradable contracts out there in that range because there's so many players who are treated like the star, getting that 35 million plus. And if you're not that, you need to be the complementary piece to those star players, and you got to be making less than $15 million. Well, Bruce Brown is kind of in that purgatory of NBA contracts where he's making $23 million this season. And if you don't believe me how difficult it can be to trade contracts in this range, just ask the Chicago Bulls when it comes to Nikola Vucevic's contract, which is still on the books over there. But I digress. We're talking about the Toronto Raptors here with Bruce Brown. Going around the league, trying to find a trade destination, like it's easy to say one thing, the Raptors should trade Bruce Brown. We all know that. It'd be better off getting something out of Bruce Brown in a trade rather than getting maybe nothing for him at the end of the season. We want to rebuild. Bruce Brown doesn't really fit into that, and he can help a lot of good teams. But going around the league, looking at the various cap space situations for these teams, there's just not really a lot of good trades that lineup for Brown. So going back to my previous thoughts about the Sasha Vizenkov buyout and the $11 million in cap space that has opened up for the Raptors, what is now adding on as a trade chip the Raptors have is that they can take back not only, you know, the $23 million of salary that Bruce Brown has, they don't have to take all of that back, they can actually take back even more, $11 million more. So all of a sudden, the options are a lot more broad as to what the Raptors can do for this trade. But like I said, it also becomes a trade chip. We can be a salary dumping ground, and that's valuable to some teams. That's valuable to a team, particularly like the Los Angeles Lakers, who reportedly are still showing interest in Bruce Brown, even though we are in the late stages of July. And we're going to talk about what that offer could look like over the course of the rest of the video today on Amateur Hour Sports, the YouTube channel completely dedicated to Toronto Raptors content. Drop a like if you enjoy. Subscribe for more content like this throughout the offseason and beyond. Help us not grow to 18,000 subscribers. So, yes, this report did come out this week talking about the potential of the Los Angeles Lakers going after Bruce Brown because the Lakers just like the Raptors, are one of the very few teams that have not brought in any free agent acquisitions in the offseason. Yes, the Raptors made the free agent signing of bringing back Garrett Temple, but we're not really going to count that. We're going to talk about new players coming to your team. The Lakers are also in that category, even though they have aspirations to be a contender, to be a serious playoff team, to be a serious threat to win the NBA championship. They didn't bring in a single player, and the cap situation has made that difficult. LeBron James taking on as much money as he did, and even he forgave some of his salary. He didn't take the full max. He's just under, but he didn't go after the full max to satisfy the Lakers and their cap constraints a little bit. Well, how about $11 million of cap space on our end to ease some of those cap constraints? Because the Lakers have been 
very active in trying to make some sort of trade happen with one of the following players, if not more of the following players. They've been supposedly looking at trading Rui Hachimura, D'Angelo Russell, Gabe Vincent, as well as Jared Vanderbilt. They're looking to dump this salary somewhere because these guys make a decent chunk of change, particularly Rui Hachimura, who's making about $17 million, and particularly D'Angelo Russell, who's making over $18 million. But Vando's on a $10 million per year contract for the next four years. That's not an egregious contract. That's a pretty fine value, but they'd rather shed that salary somewhere else for more or maybe offensively driven player. Gabe Vincent dealt with injuries last season. Maybe he can provide something, but he's also in that $10 million contract range. They want to dump this salary. They feel as though it can be better allocated elsewhere, and the Raptors provide the perfect opportunity to give them a contending sort of piece in Bruce Brown, who a year ago was a pivotal part of the Denver Nuggets championship roster. Maybe he can do something similar to the Lakers. And at the end of the season, they can wipe their hands clean of that salary, open up all that cap space, and the purple and gold can absolutely make waves in free agency if they had that cap space available to them, which they did not in the previous season. So that's why the Lakers likely have interest in Bruce Brown. They have interest in the player, and they have interest in this salary landfill that we can provide them. And the Raptors should be interested in some of these players as well, especially one of the additional assets that the Los Angeles Lakers can offer. So looking at the players available here, Rui Hachimura is obviously a very interesting one, somebody who can play... A bit of a switchable role on defense can play, maybe even sometimes as a stretch five, but definitely can play in a sort of power forward role, maybe even slide up all the way to the three. And on offense, he's a guy who can hit some threes. He can do a little bit of damage, not quite to the levels that was expected of him as a former lottery pick, but he can do some damage on offense and he can bring some spacing to the team. That would be a nice player to have. The contract is a bit expensive, but I don't think it's something the Raptors can't afford. That being said, I'm not sure this is the sort of trade the Lakers would part with him in especially given the asset that I want to add to this, because the asset that I'm attacking if I'm the Raptors in this situation, you want Bruce Brown and you want to use us as that salary dumping ground, then we absolutely have to get that 2029 first round pick. The Lakers, that's like they're all in chips on this LeBron James era. They really don't have much else to offer as far as building this team is concerned unless they offer that pick. So they would have to really feel confident this is the right trade for them, but potentially this is the right trade for them. So I'm not going to I'm not going to go after the players who I feel like you know would help this team a lot in Hachimura cuz I think the Lakers can still get more service out of him, but a player the Lakers should absolutely want to part with is D'Angelo Russell. I really am not a big fan of D'Angelo Russell's game, but for one year, I could probably stomach it. For a Raptors team that is in the first year of the rebuild, according to Dark Ryakovich, take on the D'Angelo Russell contract, add in the Jared Vanderbilt contract. I know it's four years, but it's four years right around 10, 11, 12 million dollars per season. That's really not crippling in any way. And the Raptors, even though Vando doesn't really bring much of anything at all to the offense, Vanderbilt is that big wing sort of defender that the Raptors have been longing for. That's the archetype of a player that they really need on this roster. So I think taking that contract on, now I said $20 million contracts aren't very tradable. $10 million contracts definitely can fit into that category of tradable contracts. So I'm looking at Russell, take that salary. Vanderbilt, take that salary. Plus, I think he can help the team throughout this season and potentially beyond. And you really get that nice 2029 first round pick asset. Think about the Los Angeles Lakers going forward. At some point, father time has got to catch up to LeBron James. He's 39 years old. In 2029, he's not going to be around. I'm sure Anthony, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure Anthony Davis won't be a Los Angeles Laker by 2029. The Lakers at that point could be in a full-scale rebuild. Like, that is a long time away, that 2029 pick. And sure, the Lakers always have ways and for agency to figure things out, but there is a great potential, in my opinion, that the 2029 first-round pick from the Lakers is going to be extraordinarily valuable. So I see that as a fantastic return the 2029 pick, I think, has a lot of value from the Los Angeles Lakers. I think having D'Angelo Russell, I mean, look, he brings shooting. He brings ball handling. Not necessarily a bad piece to have. Like, he's still a good player. I just don't think he plays very much winning basketball. That's fine for a season. Then that becomes cap space for the Raptors. The Vanderbilt contract, you got to eat for four years. But it's only, like, it's very cheap. It's a relatively cheap contract. And I do think he has value to bring to the table for the Raptors because they need defense he brings defense, and worst case, it's a tradable contract, and other teams who value defense might look out for him as well. So 
with this trade in mind, the Lakers want to try and set, set things right for the season. Like, they've been a playing team year after year after year. I don't necessarily think that changes a whole lot with this trade, but they can put themselves in a bit of a better position for the present, I think, with a player like Bruce Brown who complements the stars better. And on top of that, it puts them in a better position for the short-term future for cap space purposes. Long-term, look, that's a bad asset to give away, but that's the price you pay. The Raptor taking on salary, giving away a pretty decent player who maybe some other teams would have interest in. And overall, I think that this is a pretty solid trade from both ends of proceedings. The Raptors have the cap space available. They can make this trade. How likely is it to happen this soon? I'm not so sure. The Lakers might want to see what they have with J.J. Redick before committing to a trade like this. But look, the Raptors can be aggressive right now. They've got that cap space available. They can be aggressive right now. Sure, they can be patient as well. But for me, you know, we're working on rebuilding. Let's see what we got when we get rid of Bruce Brown. Why wait to make it happen? And a trade like this would make me pull the trigger and say, let's go out and get this done. Let's go out and trade Bruce Brown. Set ourselves up better for the future. So what do you make of this potential trade? And what do you make of this cap space? So the Raptors sign somebody using a trade. Give me all your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. That's all for me for today. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more Raptors content. And I'll see you again next time for another video.